Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here and welcome back to Transport Fever. And in the last episode we did some upgrading and optimization of the lines that we already had. And it is starting to turn a profit on quite a lot of them. We still have a lot of lines in the red, but I feel like this is the time that we need to start looking at other lines to set up. Now, bank balance is a little low, I will admit. But uh, I think we can make things happen. Now, of course, if you are enjoying the series, don't forget to leave a like down below. And leave any suggestions you have for the series down in the comments below. I do like to read them. And, of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. But without further ado, let's get on with it. So the main thing is um, having a look at where we are right now with the state of the lines. Now, there are a couple of things that we can do. Uh, this is just the, an overview of where we are right now. There is, of course, Thursk down here as well with the bus service that's just starting up now. And we've got this long line running from New Haven all the way up to Aid via Stonehouse. But the one that's really kind of packing up right now is the fuel line here now. We'll probably need some more trucks. And the reason is that we have double the capacity of trains now bringing oil and fuel back and forth. So these trains right here, these little diesel trains, uh, are actually picking up a fair amount of crude and bringing them to the refinery up here. And you can see the amount of oil uh, that's being delivered is resulting in a lot of fuel being deposited here. So the other train that's here, this is bringing, this is bringing almost a full load of crude oil. And this one here has about 11 units of crude oil. So we could even do with a little bit of scheduling on these trains just to space them out a little bit more. I would ideally like to have one going out while one is coming back, but the gap between them is sort of okay for now. But I think the bigger issue is really just when they bring that fuel back, I think this line here is still going to have a lot of fuel waiting. So I'm going to add a couple more, uh, a couple more of these Opal Blitzers onto this line here. I'm not really going to lose anything by doing this because the cargo is already waiting. So it's just free money waiting to move. So I think we're we're good to do that, frankly. One thing I really, really like about this game is just how you can see all of the little things all stacking up at each platform. Uh, you can see that just there. Um, and of course, you know, each unit as it builds up, I think, to like 10 or so units, then it becomes this big one. And that happens with, like, everything. So even the crude oil you can see here. There's a big tank and then a little barrels along. Which is really, really nice. It's a nice amount of detail in this game. Okay, so I've just had a thought. What if we were to start moving some construction materials? Now, that's an idea uh, that could work out. The only problem, really, uh, that's stopping me from doing that, is the construction materials plant is here next to Southam. Across the lake is where the quarry is. So I'm just having a look to see if there is a better place we could move it from. Now we could, we could bring it from this quarry over here. So if we have a look at the contours, it might actually be better to do that. Now this is right on the coast, so we could ferry it across using cargo ships, bring it to a transfer point here, and then have that bring it back and forth. And the ship could probably bring the construction materials back. We could use a train to bring it along to somewhere else. That's all possible as well, but I feel like that's going to be more lines for the same effect. Now, the other idea I had is using this quarry, and we bring it all the way across by train, down across the river, and to this plant, and then have it bring it back. Now, the problem with that is, if we just have a look at one of the train depots, is the type of wagons we actually have to use. So, we have a look at freight wagons. Open wagons are what you use to move the sort of granulated stuff like grain, slag, iron ore, stone, coal, and that sort of thing. But to move construction materials, you need these, which are state cars. And having both of these on the same train is a bit tricky because you halve the capacity of both. So what will eventually happen is this quarry will start to output more than the train can carry very, very quickly. So... That's a bit of a problem. 
the good thing is we can use trucks to bring the construction materials back to somewhere like Aid where it can make use of it. And that could actually help quite nicely, uh, simply because although the distance is a bit long, the truck station is right at the edge over here, and that will allow us to make use of that very easily, since we don't need any upgrades to make that happen. We can just simply place a, uh, a truck station right here and bring it across, and that drops it right at the industrial station, or industrial area of the city where it's needed. Now, one thing we can do is we can use this rail line that already exists, and use that to bring sort of a transfer of construction materials over from Aid to Stonehouse as well. So, provided the trucks can bring enough in, we might actually be able to support that as well. But I'm going to have a look at that. So, really, what we need to look at is exactly how we're going to bring the stone to the construction materials plant in the first place. This one is further away, and bringing it in by train will probably bring in more. Uh, a lot sooner, but I think that's going to be a longer distance, and the train line is really going to be underutilized for that, so I don't really want to do that. I think ideally we should actually do this instead, and just bring the stone across the, the lake instead. So I'm going to look at that in, uh, for the time being. So let's let's put a truck station down. Uh, that's bus stations I'm looking at. Uh, truck station, there we go. So we need... To place one somewhere here and that's fairly cheap actually it's only about 20 grand to do it 25 grand so fairly doable and I'm going to put a depot next to it as well and simply just so we can get the line going immediately and I'm going to need a separate line for this and that's to kind of support what we were thinking of earlier of having it transfer to um, to our cargo terminal here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the harbour down first. So this is our cargo harbour. I'm going to need to connect that to roads. So let's see if I can place that there possibly and connect it up with a small country road. Ooh, that does not look nice. Let's connect that up like that. And I think we can just put the yeah, we can just put a truck station right there. So that's 16 grand. Overall, fairly cheap stuff. So now the next thing is to make sure that we can get our cargo harbour over here connected up to the quarry right here. So let's put that road down as well. Hopefully that is in range. Yep, that is catchment there. So the basic thing is the ships are going to have to go from here to here. And then they can go back and forth as they want. So I'm going to call that SCH Stone by Sea. I don't know. <laughs> stone by Sea. Yes. We're going to call it Stone by Sea. Uh, we're going to need a ship terminal or a ship um, depot as well. So let's figure out where we're going to put that. I think somewhere here would do just fine. Overall buildings are fairly cheap, I think. Uh, yeah. Alright, and let's set up all the other lines as well. So we're going to need this one for aid, which is quite a long way away, but I think we'll be fine. Alright, so that's all of the lines set up now. So the first thing really is we need this line to start moving first. So we're going to need the trucks in place and we're going to need the ship going as well. So let's have a look at what ships we have available. Uh, we've got the Axel P, I think it's called. It's a million dollars to get one, but they're quite cheap to run actually, 172,000 a year. But they are, they are quite slow, so thankfully the distance is very short. But with the huge capacity they have, we could probably only really run into issues with frequency rather than uh, capacity. So two of these would work just fine. All right, there it is. The uh, cargo ship here, they're going straight to the, um, to the other side of the river. I don't know why exactly. I'm going to turn this one around. So that goes straight there. Oh, cool. It just does a quick 180 <laughs> like that. They are quite maneuverable ships, these. Uh, yeah. So hopefully this will get that uh, line activated and it'll start depositing stone there soon enough. And, um... 
that will allow us to hopefully start transferring stone across. Now we're going to need a bit more on this side to start transferring the the stone over to the actual materials plant. But uh, our finances are not good and haven't been good for the last uh, few years now, so that's uh, that's always nice to see. But uh, I think we're going to be able to turn some profit on this fairly quickly, and uh, well, hopefully it helps the cities grow as well and all that. All right, there go all of the trucks in a nice little convoy like that. I do like that these um, stations that I've got uh, in. It's a nice mod actually. The uh, these truck stations. It just allow all of the trucks to queue up inside the station. It just gets rid of those traffic jam problems that you have uh, with the default stations. So you can see ha just how many can queue up like that. With the standard stations, you just have them all queuing up all the way down the road. And if the depot is this close, they just queue up all the way to the depot. Which is just ridiculous. But hopefully this helps to get things moving along quite nicely. Um, it is basically a copy of this line that we have here where um, the trucks are bringing the fuel back and forth. So with the trains bringing in as much fuel as they are right now, um, we can definitely see that the we're going to have a similar thing happening with the stone from these ships. So this quarry still hasn't quite figured out that there is a line available for it to output to yet, but it'll take a little bit of time and hopefully it figures it out soon enough. We're just having a look at these ships going along. We've got a capacity of 300 right now. Just have a look at its, um, uh, let's get some water here. So the frequency of it is six minutes. It's actually not that bad. Considering if we were to put one ship on here, it would probably take about 10 minutes as well. Kind of what the ferry's sort of frequency is like. Let's see how this ferry is getting along. It is moving a fair amount of passengers here, but it still hasn't reached the amount of passengers it needs to actually turn profit yet. It's getting close, but it's going to need about 40 to 50 passengers to turn a decent profit. So this is going to cost us some money for a little bit longer, but I think after that we should be okay. Now one thing I have had someone point out to me is that, oh, all of these junctions don't actually have traffic uh, traffic lights, yet cars seem to still be stopping. Uh, in fact, they stop in the middle of the junction sometimes, and yeah, they do actually stop when there's a vehicle in the way. But what I've also seen them do um, is they actually stop... When a, when a, I was going to say a passenger, when a pedestrian uh, crosses the road in front of them. Now, I'm not entirely certain what causes that, because I've seen most of my trucks just go. They don't actually stop like this, but these cars somehow do, and I don't know what's actually causing that uh, in this particular case. Like, you can see, this pedestrian's now crossing the road, the truck has stopped. And they'll stop, let them cross the road, and then they'll move. Like, it's actually properly realistic. Never mind the bus that just did a fantastic U-turn like that. But, like, everything else is fairly realistic. It's just, there's no traffic lights on any of these junctions, and I don't know why. It's just not in there, yet they don't seem to need it, since the cars just behave as though there are traffic lights to begin with. It's a very, very strange thing, but, um, I'm not going to question it too much. It's just, yeah, I don't know why that is the way it is. I genuinely don't. Alright, so our quarry here has finally figured out that there's a line, and it is starting to output some uh, stone for us. It's not a lot of stone, I will admit. I don't think this one has any yet. Oh no, it's got seven units of stone, so we're getting there. We are finally getting there. There's a lot of trucks moving back and forth, not actually doing anything now. But this uh, stone line is finally moving along. I do feel like the depot here is going to get in the way. They are actually going to have to go around it. And they're going to turn around in such a ridiculous way. Or just clip through it. I have no idea what's going to happen. This one looks like it just goes straight through it. They are kind of ghost ship-esque. I should have probably put the depot over here instead. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter even in the slightest, to be honest. It just looks a bit weird. I might actually fix that in future just because of how weird I think it looks, but other than that, it's perfectly fine. So a ship with 150 capacity is now going to pick up 7 units. Which is about as much as this quarry is is producing right now, actually. Uh, it's telling us to ship more stone, but it's, it's, it's weird. We need the frequency to really get it going, I, I think, anyway. 
Now some of you might be wondering, how does this system actually work? After all, this harbour, or this cargo harbour, isn't connected to the construction materials plant directly in even in the slightest. It's not connected to anything on its own. Um, the reason is, the game kind of works out cargo movements on its own. See, compared to games like Transport Tycoon, where you define the direction of everything, you define where you want a particular type of cargo to be delivered to and from, you can specify to load or unload at particular stations. In this case, what the game decides to do is it loads it up with whatever. You know, if there's a line that is going to a place that accepts a particular type of cargo, the game will attempt to make the, the cargo get there some way, somehow. So what it actually does is it has figured out that uh, these trucks are going to the construction materials place over here and that accepts stone so even though these trucks aren't connected to a quarry at all the stone hops from the ship to the harbor to the truck station and then from the truck, truck station to the materials plant now supposing we were to get a truck station here and connect that up to let's say stonehouse or even a train to stonehouse it would then bring construction materials from the plant back to this cargo harbour for the ships to bring back. And then the cycle continues. And I think it does it to a maximum of about three or four jumps. I haven't seen it do more than that, but I would be keen on trying it to see just how many lines we can jump. But uh, it is interesting to see just how the game figures that out. Uh, it knows where cargo is going to be accepted, so it just tries to make it get there in some way. So we're going to see this ship now drop off that stone that it's carrying. And that should appear at the truck station ready for collection pretty much immediately. I think it's like invisible ants or something that carry it between the stations. But as soon as this is unloaded... There we go, there it is, right there. Seven units of stone from the seven units that were on this particular ship, ready for collection. And now this truck is coming in. In fact, let's, let's follow this truck. So this truck here is now going all the way uh, around to collect the stone. I don't know how it's going to collect that stone, it doesn't look like it can fit into the truck at all. But uh, we're going to go with it anyway. So it's going to pick up all of that. And away it goes. And this is going to go all the way north to the construction materials plant. So let's just speed that up and see where it goes. So all the way along. There it goes. Along this road. And it's quite a smooth road actually. And there it is. And then it's just going to unload all of that there. And go back for some more. And the cycle will just continue. So hopefully... The ships that we have here are going to be bringing in enough to keep these trucks busy for a while. If there are, let's say, too many trucks, like too, too many empty trucks going back and forth, I may repurpose them to bring construction materials instead. So that's another thing that we can do. So this construction materials plant has already figured out there is a line going and it's storing the stone to make more construction materials and then it will output that for these trucks to bring to aid. So, this one's already carrying two units already, which is very, very good. So we're already seeing the start of a production line here, which is very, very nice to see. It clearly shows that this, uh, this system is working. Now, I've probably spoken about how that actually works before, but uh, I figured maybe for those who weren't there for the first episode, uh, we might actually just cover it again, who knows. But yeah, this is a system that actually well and truly can work. Alright, but as this ship comes in to the harbour... Oh, we can actually ride the ship. Sort of. It's sort of like what the bridge view would be right now. But let's ride this ship all the way into the harbour. And I'm going to leave that there. So we've got a new cargo line, a new type of cargo coming into one of our main cities. And I think it's definitely going to go a long way to helping it grow. And you can see just the amount of stone now just piling up at the harbour, ready for the ships to come and collect. I think, honestly, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to turn profit. 
but this is going to be a really big moneymaker right here. Between fuel and passengers, honestly, construction materials are one of the most profitable things to actually work with. So we're going to see this really start to bring the company back out of the red and well and truly into the green, hopefully sooner rather than later. But yeah, I'm going to leave that one there. This is Transport Fever. If you've enjoyed this series and you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name is Panzer, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.